1k dreamer please hi guys welcome back to my channel so many of you have requested me to make a video on mythic eileen so here it is and i will talk about her skills as well as where she is useful in especially based on the korea server right now but as you know many things are not the same for global just use this as a point of reference okay do not wholeheartedly copy whatever you see from the korea side anymore so mythic eileen this is her gorgeous art so for her passive which is very long all attacks have a 60% chance to increase skill cooldown of shock targets by 5 seconds. Her default buff over time will include, for every 2 attacks, she has 100% chance to reduce the target shock resistance by 61.2% for 20 seconds. When she revives, she will transform. So the transformation mechanics work differently for different mythical heroes. Even for Mythic Rudy, which we will talk about in future, he does not transform the same way as Myth Eileen and Myth Ace. So for Myth Eileen's case, she will only transform after she revives. So you might think, well, this is kind of uh, not so great because you know there's no continuity. But later on, you know, as we go along, you will realize that it's very possible. Then for the last part of a passive, in PvP she applies a new effect called Awakened Lightning whereby she will increase her single target skill damage and also increase her ignore defense efficiency by 30%. Okay, um, I think this scales with skill level and these numbers that I'm using are all based on skill level 15. Every 2 attacks she will also deal additional damage to shock targets equal to 912% of attack. So there's a lot of uh, passive damage dealing and also trying to increase her own shock capabilities okay, with her passive. So because Mythic Eileen is a hero that has two forms before and after revival, I decided to present the skill set as such so that you will be able to see her pre-transformation variant skill set uh, at a glance rather than seeing it split up because she's not really similar to how Ace functions. So for skill 1, she deals AoE damage, has a 60% chance to shock. She also removes buffs and decreases the attack of enemies. So just based on this alone, you will see that she has uh, this skill has quite universal utility. Removing buffs and decreasing attack is really useful not just in PvP but also in PvE. For skill 2, she teleports to the target, becomes unstoppable, deals AoE damage, 60% chance to shock as well. She also provides an unremovable damage reduction and unremovable status effect resistance increase to all allies. So this is also a very universally good skill, whereby it makes your entire team more bulky and resistant to all the debuffs. Finally, for skill 3, it is a buff skill. She will increase all allies' defense. Uh, and also grants non-DPS allies damage immunity for 5 seconds. She will also provide an unremovable attack increase and crit damage increase to ranged allies specifically for 20 seconds. Okay, So of course with this buff, it is very possible to use her in PvE. And because she does have defense increases by herself, you know, you can actually afford to give her skill cooldown sets in order to allow her to reuse these skills more consistently and efficiently so that your damage is kept at a high level in terms of PvE of course. In PvP wise, I think this is also possible. You can also still give her skill cooldown or even defense increase sets okay? because she is after all a tank. Our players may even opt to give her attack speed with time acceleration. You know, it really depends on how much bulk you have for her. So for ultimate skill, she becomes invincible and deals AoE damage, has a 100% chance to shock and also has a 100% chance to prevent ultimate skill gauge increase on shock targets. She also reduces allies cooldown and increases allies single target skill damage. So again, this second part of the ultimate skill is really good universally for both PvP and PvE. Okay, for the first part is mostly for PvP because it's AoE damage and it also prevents them from gaining ultimate skill gauges. So the faster you can use this ultimate skill, okay, which most likely leads to her using the Ming set as well. So the faster you are able to get her ultimate skill used, the faster you'll be able to lock your enemies and prevent them from gaining ultimate skill gauge. So after she dies, she will revive. So the thing about her transformation is that her skills take a drastic change. 
Okay, as you can see for skill 1, it becomes a single target attack. It deals damage based on her attack and defense. She also has a 100% chance to decrease attack speed and movement speed okay, by a very huge amount for 20 seconds of that single target. She will also apply recovery disable on shock targets. For skill 2, she teleports to the target and becomes invincible and she deals damage equal to uh, a certain percentage of her attack to the uh, target, also single target. She has 100% chance to shock. She also deals additional damage to shock targets. Then she will also remove debuffs from herself. And this particular single target will be heroes that specifically go for ranged allies. For skill 3, she will deal single target damage again. She will have 100% chance to shock. She will also be able to disable passives of shock targets. Okay, So if she uses skill 2 first, then skill 3 later, she will definitely disable the passive of whatever target she is targeting. She will also cast an unremovable shield on herself Okay, based on a certain percentage of her defense. She will also deal fixed damage to that specific target every 3 basic attacks for 20 seconds and somehow this is a buff effect that cannot be removed. So for her ultimate skill after the transformation, it is quite sick. Okay, She becomes invincible, deals single target damage based on attack and defense. She will deal additional damage every 2 seconds for 10 seconds to all enemies in a circular range around that target. So it's kind of like a damage over time AoE. Not only that, she will have a 60% chance to create an area that shocks enemies. And then she will create an additional area at a random location within a circular range 10 meters around the target equal to the number of debuffs on the target. So if your particular enemy has 5 debuffs, she will be able to create 5 areas that shocks enemies. This is very very gross. <laughs> okay. And considering her passive, remember that she is able to reduce shock resistance by a large amount, is still active, very high chance your enemies will be shocked. Okay, so one thing to note if you want to start working on uh, preparing for her, make sure your shock resistance and shock accuracy divinities are slowly being built up. Okay, unique stats. This is where I think is the most game changing for her in particular. Now we've seen how unique stats affect the hero, especially for Myth Ace, and how that really changes the game, especially when he hits a higher level. I think for Myth Eileen, it already changes the game from a very early stage. So for Tier 1, level 40, she will decrease allies crit damage received. Okay, and this can be stacked up to 5 stacks whenever they get attacked. So there will be a huge huge reduction in crit damage received, making your entire team more bulky and survive better. Tier 2 at level 45, when she dies, she's gonna deal a huge ton of damage every 1.5 seconds for 15 seconds that is 10 times okay to all targets in the, a circular range 20 meters around herself 60% chance to shock and has 100% chance to remove buffs this is a huge huge damage dealing move already when she dies and by the time she comes back not sure how much HP your enemies will have because 20 meters is a huge range even for Ace, I think Ace's um, ultimate skill currently does like high 3000 to 4000 percentage of attack. So you can only imagine what this amount will do for 10 times, okay? Because it's damage over time. So the real game changing one comes at tier 3. Tier 3, she revives with 100% HP whenever she dies. And this has a skill cooldown of 150 seconds, which means if you do not kill her within this 150 seconds again, she will be able to most likely revive. So in the case, she has kind of like an endless revive. Now in PvP matches, they last for about what, 3 minutes? So skill cooldown 150 seconds really probably means uh, she will revive once. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> when this is triggered. So she really gains an entirely new life. When revived, she becomes unstoppable as well. So you can't really deal damage to her for 30 seconds as well. So that really leaves you with 120 seconds time frame to kill her. 
after that, after the unstoppability is gone. And uh, I think in Guild War, your matches last way longer, so there's actually a chance for her to be able to revive even faster. And I think this skill cooldown is actually affected by skill cooldown ac uh, accessories, sorry not accessories, gears, as well as time acceleration effects. So it is very possible that this cooldown could be even faster, allowing her to revive one more time in, in PvP most likely. And if you have heroes that actually reduce skill cooldown of heroes, I think that could also affect. In a sense, she does have a, a time limited revival, but in a sense also unlimited revival. Yeah. <laughs> At level 55, in PvP, she increases her own defense and reduces damage received, increasing her bulk by a huge ton. And tier 5. In PvP, she revives one ally with 5% of max HP. If the target is a tank, universal, or range hero, she will revive them with 45% of max HP. Fixed. 20 second cooldown, which means every 20 seconds, she can possibly revive. Uh, an ally, I would assume so, okay, based on how it's worded. In addition, she applies Awakened Lightning to all allies, and if you remember the effect of Awakened Lightning, this is an effect that increases single target skill damage and ignore defense efficiency by 30% to all allies. So your entire team is also increased in terms of damage output. So with all that said, when is she likely to come out? Now based on Korean server's plans, they plan to release a mid hero every 3 months. If Global does adopt that pattern, okay, the earliest she could come out will be February. If Global doesn't, the earliest she can come out is January. <laughs> yeah. So assuming that you know they are logical, with because there are still some L plus heroes that are not released, I assume she will come out in February for us. Okay. So you have about two months, less than two months actually, less than two months to prepare all the rubies you need to get Myth Eileen. So one other thing to point out. And you may be thinking as well, so will Myth Eileen actually be so sick on global server at launch? You must take note that for Korean server, the Rin Pad remake and the Arch Priest nerf were both things that came out two weeks after Myth Eileen's release. So it was not a coincidence, okay? It was planned to make Myth Eileen OP. In a sense, you can say that we are definitely ready, okay? The global server is definitely prepared for this insane debuff you need to happen okay, in any time now because our Arch Priest have already been nerfed and the Rim Pad has gotten a sick buff which I think is completely completely too early and uncalled for but you know Global likes to release everything at once so yeah we have a very disgusting Rim Pad right now so all I'm saying is Miss Eileen is going to be exceptionally good uh, in Global server when she launches for PvP in terms of debuff casting wise, especially if you have a Rin pet, okay, or if you are trying to get an L plus pet by then, hopefully you get a Rin pet and then yeah, that will really change things up for you. So how useful is she exactly? So we're gonna refer to the Korean statistics based on where she's used right now. As you can see, she is used in a large majority of teams in the Korean meta, in the Korean PvP right now, along with Myth Ace, Platin, and also Kao, okay, who just got remade a few months ago in Korea server, and Colt, okay, as well. Uh, take note that again, she is really supportive for uh, in terms of range units, but you know, people do like to use Mythic Ace, of course. And uh, as you can see, there are a variety of teams you can use her in both burst teams as well as in uh, tank teams like Klamif, uh, Fine, and Rudy Plus. Okay, Iota as well. So there are many. There's quite a variety of teams to run her in. And uh, yeah, so as I was saying, her skill, her her gear. I mean, people mostly use skill cooldown, which I would assume affects all her revival cooldown as well as the skills. So she's able to be more useful in PvP. And the other two pieces are most likely the main gears because you really want her to get her ultimate skill gauge as soon as you can because her ultimate skill is probably one of her best, okay, especially in the early match. And then for accessories wise, uh, we are looking at the rage accessory, 
for her survivability, Revival of course, Chris Earring for increased debuff duration, and then uh, Evan's neck, uh, sorry, Rudy's necklace for evasion and time acceleration as well to reduce her own skill cooldown at every time she attacks. So some pets to go along with her include the Ace pet, the Rin pet, and the upcoming New Year Jave pet. The Geo pet is used as well because as I mentioned, Geo pet is basically the more powerful version of Rin and Chris pet. It's quite interesting to see them use Rudy pet on the tanky teams and a Ming pet as well on the tanky teams. Okay, so this is Guild War, and then moving on, we have the Gold Dungeon. So she's also used in Gold Dungeon because remember, for her base form, she uses only AoE attacks, so definitely possible to be used uh, in uh, Gold Dungeon because she technically won't die in PvE, right? So she will not get to transform uh, to her Wolf form in PvE. Not used in Soulstone Dungeon, and she's also used in the Elixir Dungeon. As you can see, these are various compositions that you can try her out with in PvE. Again, she mainly buffs her ranged friends, so using her with ranged units is the best. But of course, you do also do see that some people like to use the DPS Com with her. I think that's also fine. Ultimately, she still is able to you know increase single target damage and also uh, also uh, what's that? Decrease their skill cooldown with her ultimate skill okay so yeah these are some possible comps but ideally with ranged units that will allow you to make the most use out of her rune comp as well rune dungeon as well and then even for the exp dungeon she's also used with all these uh, dps units not that she's bad just that her buff skill will not actually help them even for gigantus she's also used there with Kyle Heron, serena and Coset. And take note of the first team because I think, I think that's a team that many many Korean players use to clear fast. The Dylan's Plus, Evan Plus, Serena and Diana team. Okay, It's almost used in every single raid. But take a look at Myth Eileen who is you know used outside of that comp. Varian raid as well. Varian raid, uh, not many people use her. The first team is used a lot as I mentioned. Not many people use her in Varian raid but she's also usable as you can see with ranged units. Then we have the Lizardra raid, uh, also not really used a lot here. Uh, Dunfrost as well, not really used. I think some people are just forcing it at this point. <laughs> those people, those 1% of players. There are much better teams as you can see Okay, for the Dunfrost raids. This is for the Nestra Shane raid, again not many people use her here because ultimately it's still a single boss and you won't want to use AoE skills. She's not used in any of the 8-man raids so this is Celio's not used at all. He will be much better off with single target damage dealers. Uh, even for definitely not in Catastrophe raid and even for Orochi raid not used at all. Now for the guild raid, she's actually possible. Okay, She can be used in Thunder Dragon because ultimately that raid does rely on range heroes so it's possible to use her and she does provide a good buff as well and she has inbuilt revive so if she revives there she dies and gets revived there you can actually make use of her ultimate uh, single target skills as well to allow you to do more damage as well and then for fear dragon she's also used uh, it's a very close percentage to the current team that uh, many of us are running which is the serena cosette team as you can see uh, she's actually replacing lena in this case yeah so definitely possible and these are some pet options i just wanted to show uh, definitely possible as well to try and then she's definitely not used in the silence raid because there are no range heroes there so as long as there's a range hero used in pve i think you can actually use her as a great buffer for the range heroes ultimately she is supposed to i think go in line with the idea that her brother Kyle heron is a range hero so you know that is supposed to be how they can work together okay so i hope this video helped and if it did to give it a like and subscribe to my channel Big shout out to my channel members Chilling, Juke, Gonzalo, Nick McGee, Yamaki, Kevin, Harlan, and JDM for the support. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much and see you!